developing ethnicity specific risk stratification and risk management models and would like to start yeah. thank you thank you uh, so i have uh, something odd as a topic what i have been hearing since morning and uh, i i think that at the end of the presentation we can generate some interest into this and learn some of the important yet key messages concised in this 10 minutes 15 minutes presentation so i think uh, with course of time and with india taking lead in lot of guidelines and designing their own treatment protocol lot of medical uh, people they are and clinicians they are developing interest into research and how do they take charge of the treatment modality they are deciding for their patients so that's where my uh, my uh, presentation talk will revolve around and i'll uh, give you some bits and pieces related information related to how do you identify an appropriate grant call and how do you decide that you hit that grant correctly you win that grant so with that art of writing and winning a grant so what why do you want to write a grant so the first question why do you as a clinician you are having a heavy opd you are taking care of all your patients visiting hospitals and in addition to that you want to do research also you want to take up some grant also so what what is there as a motive with you so it could be contribution to the science and society you feel that i am following something which has not been adapted in my own population and if i based on my clinical observations uplift update those protocol that will heavily contribute to the science and the society to the population which i am treating if that is your motive maybe you can definitely go for a grant proposal writing enhance your professional and organizational capacity build a network identify people who are actually working in the similar domain and you want to invest into mutual learning so that's where the grant proposal help us out find funding definitely for all of this thing we need a solid funding which actually help us in deriving something which is sustainable in nature so with you without you your work will stay with the system so for that we need funding So I've just given you a couple of example. How do you identify appropriate proposal for your grant? So the first one, consultation with the expert. So all of us have have got an opportunity of working with the expert in the field or getting mentored for some of the topics. So once you talk to your mentor or expert in the field, they will help you out in refining the area of problem. So what is the problem in your area of work? So clinic, be it clinical research. or public health engagement or community engagement anything related to that how do you refine that this is an actual problem and not something i am only facing so with that experts consultation is a very useful tool discussion with peers so this kind of meetings which are supervised by some of the experts but you get an opportunity to meet and discuss the things with your peers say hey i am finding this are you facing this in your setting so that kind of things actually give rise to lot of research questions the last one literature review so you read make yourself updated about what has been reported in your own field that will help you in designing an appropriate research topic grant topic so i'll take you through uh, our own journey i have just placed one example of our successful grant and how we ended up getting that grant so we have very recently now not very recently uh, one and a half year back we established a center for global center for non communicable disease related research here we aim to do advocacy and uh, make sure that whatever is emerging as a scientifically evidence supported intervention gets into the system so that our result does not lies only in the publications we wanted them to be adapted by the system so that's what the motive of this center ncd are and under that we got one particular project as a first project under which we develop a cohort which is known as um, cohort of cardiovascular diseases risk assessment so essentially diabetes hypertension obesity how these are affecting indian population and how non invasively we can actually assess lot of this people so that was the whole idea and then we were reading trying to update our knowledge about chronic diseases how this can be tackled in lmics and then we came across this concept of blue zone i think all of us are knowing about it blue zone can we make it bit more interactive so it's a zone where maximum number of people are living for the longest durations so uh, uh, the studies have been conducted on cohort and they identified that there are certain areas globally available 
where people are living long irrespective of uh, any of the condition. So what is the element that these people are carrying that other people are not carrying? So that's where they identified eight uh, blue zones and they tried to understand that how they are managing their disease and how they are increasing their lifespans. This gave rise to brainstorming sessions. We discussed these ideas with our peers. We discussed this with our expert group of people. And we were surprised, super shocked to see that none of the blue zone is from India. We are seeing our forefathers living for such a long life and uh, that has not been reported anywhere. So what could be the reason? So we tried to dig out those things that are we not living longer enough? So our, what is our life expectancy? Sorry, I'm talking a bit more from the public health perspective, but for the larger good of our uh, country's health, this might be useful. Yeah, around 67. So we, we undertook a study where we compare people who are above the age of 70, whose biological age is lesser than their chronological age. And then we try to see uh, their counterparts who are 70, but their biological age might be 80, 85. And then we try to understand why these people have a good profile as compared to others. So this is how our research idea was generated. And then we got a lot of advocacy from media. This is uh, last week or last to last week, Times of India is cutting. And they were very happy to see that in our population, inflammation is the key point. We also have like diabetes, hypertension, belly fat, all of those Indian criteria. But we know that age is a very protective factor. So in your young days, you do anything, but you are somewhere down the line protected. But this study gave us an idea, even in elderly, you keep check of all of these risk factors, you can live longer. So this was our basic research idea, how this emerged. And ultimately, we, last week only, we got a wonderful grant to first understand factors which are responsible for longevity in Indians, number one. Number two, just do profiling of people who are living longer irrespective of their place in India versus people who are not living longer. So premature death, premature precipitation of the chronic diseases in our, in our youth, what are those factors? Number three, as an objective, the grant need to identify contextual intervention. So over here, when I'm saying contextual intervention, it means that if I say that you go ahead with only vegan diet or you go ahead with non-vegetarian based protein sources, that might not be appropriate for my context. So that's where I need to design something which is appropriate for my population in terms of cost, in terms of my population sensitivity, and maybe the last one would be in terms of its clinical gain. So that's what we hit as a proposal and we, we are now approaching for establishing a center for longevity research in India. However, this was our journey. This was our cycle of cracking the grant. So we had some addition, we had some preliminary analysis from our previous study. We just did deliberations. We read a bit about it. We had a consultation with expert and the peer group of people. And then we did something like this, what we call as identifying the grant bodies. So these are just four or five examples, but we know that we have multiple grant bodies. It could be your CSR body. It could be uh, the foundation grant. It could be government grant. It could be uh, for clinicians like pharmacy devices related, pharmaceutical devices related. So you first identify those sources which might want to support the idea that you have. And then you need to be familiar with this terminologies. I might skip this, but you might see it as a very often people use this, this terminology. What do you call as RFP? What do you mean by LOI? It's this letter of intent. Then what, what is the difference between grant and contract? Uh, but we can skip it as of now. Yeah. But if we want to have something successful, at times what happens? My research question is fantastic. Still, I'm not able to crack the grant. And at times, my research question is mediocre, but I am winning multiple grants for that question. So there could be certain hidden elements for a successful grant. Which are those elements? I've tried to list down it. So once you identify the granting agency, you need to align your grant proposal with their area of interest. Whether they are into implementation research, whether they want to 
uh, work more on the screening strategy, whether they want to work more on the treatment strategy or discovering basic science. So what is their area of interest? You might need to align your grant with that. If it is not there, all the funding agency also are answerable to their superior agencies. So if it is not there, definitely you are not going to get the grant. The second element, this can be useful if you pay attention to who has received this prior. If you don't have any idea about this, who has received this prior, you don't get an idea what kind of grants are being supported. So that just, it's like solving previous year's question papers. So you get the what is the pattern, what is the pattern. Then the budget. Budget is very, very important element of any grant proposal. So there are certain agencies which explicitly mention that this is the capping. This is the amount of contingency or HR or this is the travel fund that we give. And this is the whole sum as a budget, as a comprehensive thing. So you need to be really uh, sure about the budget that you are pressing. Majority of the filtering occurs at the time of budgeting. So they, they just sit with all the application that they receive. They just check their budget. What is not aligned, they just throw it away. Majority of the time. The second way, if your proposal is so good, fantastic, they'll reach out to you and ask you to modify your budget. But if this happens only when you are lucky enough, you get a second chance. Otherwise, you don't get it. Duration. So if my funding agency wants to support for uh, something for three years and if I'm placing it for one year, there are very less probability that I'll be getting it. Team. Team is something they definitely pay attention to. So if I want to strengthen the diabetic care, continuum of care for diabetic patients, they'll be seeing like what kind of people I have on board for that. I might need proper stakeholders for that. I might need clinical consultations. I might need public health people, epidemiologists, data scientists, everybody on board. So if my team is not showing that thing, definitely that's a drawback for me. Stakeholder engagement, that is also important. Clear plan of execution. Sometimes we, we aim a bit more, but we don't have something which is workable, doable, achievable in that duration. So that's something we need to work. Prior work is definitely an added advantage. So just like our previous study, we had something already done in that area. We showcased it to the uh, grant people and that's how we won it. So it's like building a confidence into the grant, uh, granting body that, okay, they have done something and they are capable of doing it, taking it forward. If you can show them a larger picture, that this is what your grant is going to do, this is going to be the impact of your grant, that's where the grantees feel fascinated. Credibility of the team and the organization. If I don't have prior work, if I don't have prior good publication in that area, they might not want to invest into this. This is the entire cycle. Uh, so you write something uh, in the area of your interest, submit the letter of inquiry, prepare a specific proposal. Um, you might get an approval or you might get a feedback from the agency. You work on the feedbacks and then ultimately you get a grant letter. After that, the funding will follow. And then once you receive the funding, you are supposed to give them the periodic report and update for your grants that you have received. What do we mean by letter of intent? So majority of our proposals, they start with letter of intent. So it's a short summary of what you are planning to do and you're expressing your interest for that grant. So major, major uh, organization, WHO and other people. So they will ask you to first submit that letter of intent. So it means that they're registering you as a potential grantee. So once you get that, you will be getting notification for the further process. Then the cover letter plays a really huge impact. So how you are highlighting your achievements, how do you are highlighting your team, how do you are highlighting your research question, true burden and how you are working on the strength and honestly explaining your limitations. So if that is something you can place in the cover letter, that holds a lot of importance. Because see, people who are giving the grant, they don't have ample of time. So you need to learn the art of placing your strength at an appropriate level and at an appropriate place. So that would be useful. This, this is not my own, but I found this really interesting. So this gives an entire process. How do you develop your proposal? So it's a proposal template. So we first identify a large topic. We actually do review, review of literature. Then we identify gap in knowledge. This is very, very much important. Nobody likes to support something which is already known. So first we identify gap in the knowledge, then we develop workable research question. 
see scope of our work is very much important to be de uh, decided i might want to do everything under the sky but what is my scope of work based on funding expertise and the time which is available to me so that decides your research question then specific of our project then we need to actually design a fantastic methodology in order to make the grant people know that okay we are well versed with the technology or the proposal that we are submitting and we have done our homework timeline budget and the strong conclusion so maybe uh, one last half a minute to just give you the practical tips letter of support who is supporting you makes a lot of difference so if you know your mentor uh, is sitting on so 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 body and they can vouch for your for your grant that would be very very useful then if i need an administrative support from xyz agencies that would be useful uh, document outlining the sustainability nobody want to take an exit which is premature so if i am invested a penny i need to make sure that the penny's impact is sustainable so if you can give that broader picture to the funding partner fantastic and then administrative support uh, this is also one good way gantt chart so activity wise time wise report that's it this is a template of budget how you place your budget with this yeah some of our activity and engagement thank you thank you very much